215 Beta 2 has just dropped and we're here on site at Google I.O. 2024 testing it out to give you the full lowdown on what could be the biggest beta release in about two years. But first, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more I.O., Android Beta, Android and general pixel content. We're building a super tight knit community and this is how to get connected. If you want even more content like this, including wallpaper packs, early access to our Android 15 beta wallpapers, heck, even impromptu meet and greets at events like IO, then hit that join button and see what we're offering. And we'd love to have you as a channel member. So first up in Android 15 is a new function called private space. And this creates a separate area for your Android applications for you to pick. Google equates it to a digital safe for apps you don't want others to easily access or see. And you can access those applications from the bottom of the app drawer after authenticating via fingerprint or a separate password and code. Think of this as a separate profile. You can set aside apps to live within while it's locked. And you can set this up by going to settings, privacy and security, and private space. I'm not sure if you use this option, but the top section of the Android app drawer has a suggested row of applications. And in previous versions, you needed to drag the app icon to your home screen and use the do not suggest toggle to make this from stopping it appearing from here. In Android 15 beta two, this is slightly different as you can long press the app icon to get a small no symbol that does the same thing. On some applications, this will live in the quick pop-up, quick action panel, and it's something nice to use if you don't want apps from appearing in this section, and you can tailor this as you see fit. When you plug your phone into a PC, Mac, or even to get system updates on your phone, there is a brand new system UI icon and ready for Android 15. It's tiny for now, but expect to see this blown up in more places very soon. And part of that is also the return of the Android 15 logo, which is now in the system settings app after appearing as the Android 14 logo in previous beta releases. This is the same icon you'll see as that system UI option, but it's nice to see this cohesion between the two system settings. You know that screen you see when authenticating a payment or accessing a section locked behind the password or biometrics? Well, the pop-up panel has a minor redesign in Android 15 Beta 2 with an app icon to indicate who's requesting access, plus larger text and a confirm button to continue from this area. It's another minor UI tweak from Google, but a notable change nonetheless, so we wanted to share it with you. I love seeing how Google's animations have evolved over time, and tell me if I'm being crazy here, but I think lots of system animations at least appear to my eye to have subtle touches to the easing of the final stages of these. It's super hard to spot, but the animations feel like they're not quite as sharp. That's the best way I can describe it, but let me know what you think in the comments section. I think it makes the system feel a tiny bit smoother, not noticeably so to a lot of people, but it definitely feels smoother to me. If you want home screen widgets, there is a change to the suggested widgets pane at the top here too. You can switch between these to see essential or entertainment options right now within the app widgets from your various on-device applications. There may be more categories here, but this should make it quicker and easier to find stuff that might be inspirational on your home screen. And it's a really nice extra touch. Definitely makes this feel a little bit better in terms of inspiration, as I mentioned. There's also a brand new hearing devices quick settings toggle that should make it even easier to pair with Bluetooth hearing aids and devices. It's enabled by default here too. So you just open the quick settings panel. You should see that option. If you have a hearing aid, you should be able to access this setting a little bit quicker. Developer options, there's also a slew of new changes here in beta two. First up is a new grammatical gender option that works currently with the French language only. In basic terms, it'll let you set up when the system refers to you, the user, in masculine or feminine terminology. Super limited, I must admit, but it's important nonetheless and more languages we do expect to be added in future. There's also a new disable screen share protections toggle, which isn't actually working correctly right now, at least in our testing, but it will let you effectively take screenshots or share your screen in apps that ordinarily wouldn't let you like Think for example, banking apps or when using incognito mode in Chrome, that kind of thing. Personally, I wouldn't use this for privacy reasons, but it's still an option if you want it over in the dev options section. As part of even more privacy control options, there's also a shared data section within the developer options section that will let you see what apps have make requests to access files on your device. This doesn't seem fully fleshed out at the moment because there isn't much data, but it's another thing that we think will evolve as the beta progresses in future. Another new change is that predictive back animations are now enabled on the system by default. It's most visible in the system settings app, but there is no option, as I mentioned, to enable or disable this in dev options. It's been removed entirely. Hopefully though more apps will support it soon. 
not just Google applications, as it has been a really long time coming. The Wallpaper in Style app now also has the color contrast option baked in that was previously found in developer options. That's not all though, as it has a more fully formed UI with a preview of the changes that you're making to your device. It's super easy to see just how things will look with apps and toggles. This will affect dynamic color tuning though, so be careful here if you are tweaking stuff and do wanna use the contrast option. Google has also redesigned the volume menu once again. This doesn't actually affect the slider. I'm not talking about the slider at the side that appears when you press a volume key, but rather the overflow button that brings up a bigger menu with more options. There's a splash of material you color, dynamic coloring shapes as well, but there are also improved sliders, and this is a full overhaul to improve the volume control experience. And I really do like this change. This is one of my favorites here in beta too. The privacy section within settings has also been elevated in that security and privacy section. We don't really know why, but it does put important privacy controls front and center so you can quickly enter privacy dashboard and the new privacy space section. No functionality is changed, but it is easier to access and therefore should be better for people who are new to this option. Another new change here is that when you disable Bluetooth and Android 15 beta 2, there's one slightly annoying alteration it actually won't stay deactivated indefinitely as default. Instead, it'll reactively turn on in 24 hours, kind of like how on Apple devices, Wi-Fi is enabled after the same period after you turn it off. You will need to go into Bluetooth settings and disable the automatically turn on again tomorrow option, or it will reactivate, as I mentioned, and your phone will pair again with any previously paired Bluetooth accessories. I'm telling you this now because you have been warned, don't complain about this, there is an option. It might be useful to some people who want to disable Bluetooth. I do this often, but yeah, go in and change that so you don't have problems in future. Hey guys, Jordan here tapping in real quick because Damien forgot to mention the new app pair feature for large screen devices. To initiate, just start a split screen multitasking session and now in Android 15 beta 2, you should see a new save app pair button in the recents menu where you can later access the duo on your home screen. This is just something I wanted to mention real quick, but as a foldable user, this is definitely a convenience that I've been dying to take advantage of. Okay, that's everything we've seen here in Android 15 Beta 2. I hope that is enough content for you rabid Android fans. I know there's been lots of complaints that Google hasn't done a great deal in the last few releases. There are some changes, they might not be the biggest, but we're sure more functions are gonna slowly come to fruition as this beta progresses. What are you thinking so far? Fire your thoughts into the comment sections below. And if you still want more IO content, how about you come join the channel for behind the scenes snippets and the full lowdown on Google's biggest in-person event. Love to you all from Shoreline. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and if we hit 3K likes, you'd also get four free, yes, four free Android 15 wallpapers, or join the channel and get them for early access. Thanks for watching though, and I will speak to you later.